Hey there, I'm Lisa Campion, and this is the Miracle of Healing on Empower Radio, where we come together every week to discuss all different types of healing modalities. And that's something the world needs now more than ever. And I say that every week, and it's still true. <laughs> so if you're new to my show, then welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you've been journeying with us for a while, then welcome back. So, wow, psychic kids, side kids. Can we teach our kids to be psychic? Maybe not so much. Maybe it's more about encouraging them to tap into their inherent abilities, which is really something that's a, that's something that everyone has. Today we are joined by educator, author, intuitive Ellie Molina, and she's going to help us understand how to tap into this ancient wisdom so that kids and ourselves too can stay connected to ourselves. Um, and it's really, you know, if you are a parent or an educator that's worked with sensitive and psychic children, um, it can be quite challenging for us and for them. So I'm very happy to have Ellie with us today. Um, so welcome to the show so much, Ellie. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Lisa. And thank you so much for having me. This is such a, an honor, a pleasure. I love talking to other psychics, people who get it. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I love talking to other psychics. And I think part of the reason that I love it so much is that for so much of my life as a psychic, I was felt so isolated, you know, and was trying to hide it. We were talking a little bit before the show started about how you started in the 80s like I did. You know, I, I started working as a professional when I was 19. I think that was 1987, 88. And it was such a hard, scary journey for me and maybe for you too. Can you share a little bit about what your journey's been like? Oh, sure. So Lisa, I was a closet psychic. It started at age five. But mm -hmm. back when I was growing up, this was so not spoken about. Yep. Uh, we were called gypsies, but I wasn't a gypsy, technically. And um, then during my lifetime, I really kept it quiet. I mean, I was literally a closet psychic, I would go mm -hmm. to work and be an educator during the day. And then on the weekends, I would either be working at the Long Island Psychic Fair or I would have people coming to my home for psychic readings. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later on, I worked um, for California Psychics under a pseudonym for many years. And then, of course, it'd be mom, soccer mom, um, educator, uh, PTA member, you know, all of that. And uh, psychic at the back, you know, like two different, very different lives. Mm, yeah, I, I feel you. I had sort of a similar, I was out of the, out of the psychic closet from, you know, I was also a child psychic. Um, but I just was out and started working right away and still struggled a lot with it because it wasn't that cool to be now it's slightly cool to be psychic or it's cool in some circles. Right. Um, and, and still like, you know, I grew up, my, my kids grew up in a really small town here in New England. And I was like that one mom, nobody would sit next to, you know, at the, at the sports games because it was kind of like ooh, <laughs> like you know um but tell tell me a little bit about what um how you got to work I mean I I guess because you were an educator right you were already working with kids is that how you made the connection with kids yeah it was it was through education um I was again we go back to our own childhood you know I was um psychic as a kid. What do you do with it? Well, I don't know about you. I repressed it, suppressed it. My parents were pretty cool about it, but the rest of the world wasn't so cool about it. So I just kind of squashed it. And then in the 80s, when I was teaching kids, that's when I, I had been teaching adults up until then. I was one of those young teachers teaching older adults. And um, usually we start with early ages and then work our way up. I worked my way down basically. And so I started working with middle school children in the 80s. And every Friday was, um, every, fr every Friday in middle school, we had um, game day. And our games were then organized around English language games, things that, because I was teaching English language. So things like that. And then all of a sudden, I started to notice there were times where the kids were so telepathically connected in the games that I said, okay, I'm going to have to start to use this and practice and develop it. So 
I started and it wasn't called psychic. We didn't call it psychic word. We, we called it, oh, memory, telepathy, communication, whatever you want to, you know, where you played around with that. And then I started introducing the uh, new moon journals. Okay. So we would write new moon wish lists. So that we did journaling. And then every time new moon would come around, it would be, oh, kids, time for the new moon wish list now. And then we'd cover it up. And then we'd go back a couple of weeks later, sometimes months, look at all of the things that they had accomplished, that they had set out to do. And so I started to make the connection between our thoughts and language for them and intention. And then um, it wasn't until then I pretty much kept it quiet. I really was not so vocal about any of this work until the secret came out and what the bleep. And I figured, you know what, if the secret is out and what the bleep, then we are going to bring this into the classroom and we're going to watch this. So it's just right. like my ticket in with this work. And um, at that time I was working for the New York City Public Schools and our I was doing affirmations for the tests. We would be teaching to the test. That is what is required. The teachers have to teach to the test. So our... Um, our standardized grades were so high for, ling for language, um, English language that I was called in by the administrators and the question became, what's going on in here, Molina? What are you doing? And it reminded me, if you've ever seen the movie Stand and Deliver the, with um, like, oh, what's going on in the classroom? Well, I explained we're doing affirmations and we are changing our mind and we're creating a mindset that we are successful. And um, that went over really well. It really did go over so well that they, my administrators said, listen, next year, why don't you create a program, um, an enrichment program for seventh graders? We'll call it whatever you want. Is I called it the power to create. And I eased into it through language, thought and language. What we speak matters. We create our reality, thought, word, actions. Yeah. And then I started bringing in the other elements of seeing without our eyes, remote viewing, telepathy, and it was a lot of fun. We had great results. Wow. And so you still do that work. You still help train psychic children and you still help parents and educators understand how to handle their psychic children so that they don't have to do what we did, which is to push it all underground. And I just spent a lot of time trying to pretend to be normal, you know, well, like, and I knew like they put people that if you saw angels and talk, talk to dead uncle Fred, you were going to be in the, in the psych ward, you know? So I know I didn't want that. So I just, I also had two lives in a way, like my public and mm -hmm. one, what was going on in my, my, as a child, what was going on inside of me. And it was so hard not to have any validation for it or have anybody to ask questions. So, right. um, you know, uh, and I also had a teacher, I was so, this is so heartwarming for me, but I also had a teacher in junior high school that changed everything for me by helping us. We started with dream work and doing dream journals and dream, you know, and that opened up. She was fantastic. And I think a lifesaver for me as a psychic child in junior high school, as I imagine you were for all those kids. Um, I still stay in touch with them. Not all of them, obviously, it would be too many, but I'm still in touch with a lot of kids um, via Facebook. And I love looking at their stories, what they're achieving, where they're going, just their openness and how they're really um into these spiritual journeys. So it's not all what I call, what we all call, and I'm just using some terminology over here, third dimensionality. So they're really into consciousness, conscious awareness, and working towards the benefit of the planet also. So mm, beautiful. Yeah. So do you think kids are like, start, everyone starts out psychic, and then we learned how to shut it down like you and I did? Are there some kids that are more psychic than others? What do you think? So this has been my, my experience is that, and I, I, I think we're all born with this ability. First of all, it's like another sense and maybe it's our first sense before we start speaking so that we start to pick up unconsciously, subconsciously, what is going on around us. Think of an infant, all right, can't speak yet, but does have sensations. So they are aware of their where they're at as their brain is developing, not really aware like we have the awareness right now, a different level of awareness. And then there's the connection with all the other senses. So I believe that it is there 
and then it either gets used or not used. So think about, I think often of the um, movie, uh, The Gods Must Be Crazy, if you mm -hmm. call, and then everybody there has, they click in their language. So mm -hmm. we don't know how to click like that. However, it is that window of opportunity that it, if it is encouraged, children can really go and run with their psychic abilities because I believe we all are born with this. It's our part of our intuition and it is, it just is. However, if that window of opportunity is not taken advantage of, well, then it has to be relearned later or, mm. or not at all. And then people yes. struggle with it. Yeah. And as, as parents and educators, how do we support our psychic children? Uh, good question. I believe it's done through listening first. Okay. So that one of the things that I always did as an educator and as a parent was to listen to my child. I call it listening for the gold. And this is not, inter it just starts with basics, not interrupting, not always asking questions, not giving them ABC choices, but really to listen. What is your child saying? And then if a child is, it's, it's so much begins in conversations and really understanding what is my child trying to communicate? You know, like how often, and this is not a judgment against parents, but how often do we go to the supermarket and hear crying babies and parents screaming at the kid, ah, stop crying, ah, 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 whatever. Um, we do know that when children cry, especially early on, there's a reason. They're yeah. not crying because there's no reason. There's a reason. Right. So this gets this goes back into parenting. It goes back into consciousness. It goes back into awareness. And so once a parent decides, okay, you know what? I'm going to be interacting with my child as a little person. Then what they say and what they feel is valid. And it is not for us to negate their feelings or what they see, what they feel. That's not up to us to negate it, but rather to listen and perhaps encourage or guide. Right. Yeah. I mean, it. we've come a long way and I've, I'm sure you have too heard so many horror stories about, you know, one of my, one of my students in my psychic development class really was working through some trauma she had around this because her parents when she was little took her to the priest and had them throw holy water on her you know they were they did an exorcism like it was you know because she was talking to the grandparent who'd passed over you know mm -hmm. um and seeing angels and seeing like you know things um, and that she was probably five or six full-on holy water you know mm -hmm. like you're we're gonna lock you up with the nuns if you don't stop that and mm -hmm. i mean do you think that that psychicness scares people like why do adults sometimes have such a strong reaction to this i think there's still i think most people not most i'm sorry i correct myself i think many people insert with certain belief systems are still very frightened it's an antiquated conversation left over from you know hundreds and hundreds of years ago where people are frightened of our own abilities so if we don't understand it we then squash it negate it i mean it seems like human nature has always kind of done things like that when we don't understand it we just say no 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 and we it's the devil yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And that, so like what you were talking about before, which is just having an open conversation with your children um, is the way to not squash it. Like, mm -hmm. what are you experiencing? We don't sort of ask leading questions maybe, but just what are you experiencing? What's that like for you? With mm -hmm. my kids, at, um, they were all, all three of my children um, who are adults now were really psychic as children. They all manifest a different that manifested in different ways for all of them, for each of them. But they like, you know, for me, it was about finding um, um, a context that fit within our family system, within our spiritual belief system that worked for everybody that gave them kind of a framework for understanding what was happening. Do you think that's a useful thing to kind of rope in whatever faith traditions we have? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. And so help to support 
So if your mm -hmm. family believes in angels, you talk about angels. Or if your family mm -hmm. believes in God, it's from God. Like, we can use that. We don't have to go against our, our faith traditions, right? Oh, God. No, not at all. We incorporate it. It's part of our, it's part of, you know, perhaps our belief system. It's what we believe anyway. Right. So, I mean, I you've probably seen this yourself when you're doing readings. People who strongly believe in angels, you're going to get angels in your readings. And yeah. they're going to show up. People who are highly alien focused, you're going to get aliens coming. And um, I'm assuming, I know that's the case for me, that yeah, depending too. on what the person with their belief system is, those are the entities also that make an appearance. So I do believe that uh, we use the context of where we are with our children, our environment, so that we can nurture them in this environment and have their abilities fit into or not even fit in, okay, just so that we're not always, I like to look at it as there's no lid to the box, anything is possible. And that's where I like to, to go with things. All right, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know, let's keep expanding, let's keep growing, let's keep asking questions, let's keep looking. And if we stay curious and, and out of judgment and fear, then that creates a more open conversation. Absolutely. And I imagine that the for me, like what I've noticed, I don't, I don't generally work with children. I tend to work with their parents. Like I'll mm -hmm. work with teenagers sometimes, but, um, but I also notice that there is a shift as these children become teenagers, that teens have a really different um, or expanded um, psychic awareness. What, where do you think that shift happens with teenagers? The expanded psychic awareness. It seems like it shifts a little away from like, I'm seeing fairies in the back garden to, you know, like what's going on inside with our friends, you know, like what's happening in the group yeah. community, you know, and that like how every, everyone gets suddenly they're super empathy and they're feeling all the feels that everybody else is having in. Um, and it seems like it shifts into like, which would be very developmentally understandable. But do you it's notice... There's a, like a, it changes when um, when they become teenagers. Absolutely. And I mean, it just it, exactly as you said, it, it ties into um, cognitive development as to where they are. Because I mean, when the kids are little, you know, before puberty, they're they're in the alpha state brainwave state. Right. So in that alpha state, of course, they're going to see fairies or entities or, you know, amount people who have deceased people who they're going to see lots of things and the veil, the veil is very thin and they have access to that. After puberty, we know that um, we go into the beta brainwave state, which is a lot, you know, faster. And again, um, our herd animal mentality has us bonding peer pressure. Um, that is why you'll see 13 and 13, 12, 13, 14 year old kids are their pack animals. Mm -hmm. It is just, that's where they're at. And then of course they're empathetic and compassionate and they're very, you know, there's a lot of empathy going on over there. So, and that again, shifts and changes as they get older. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know you do um, psychic development with adults as well. And what I, so interesting to me is I see this pattern all the time and I wonder if you have too, where, I see a parent who is very um, psychic, who's super suppressed it. And then they get a psychic child. And now they have like the um, reason to open it back, open up their own um, experience and maybe heal something in there too along the way in order to assist their children. Like they wouldn't go there on their own, but in order to help their kid, they'll go there. Right. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. I get that a lot with people who use their um, psychic abilities to remote view. So again, when we're doing remote viewing, remote viewing is a trained, for people who are, I'm, I'm just gonna put this out there in case there is anybody listening who's unfamiliar with remote viewing. It is the ability to see without your eyes over time, distance and space. Mm -hmm. And remote viewing is a taught skill. Yeah. So. In this case, though, again, people who are better remote viewers are usually have psychic backgrounds or they were highly intuitive as children. So there's always a connection. And that is why they're called to this work. Also, there's a calling to it. And what I've noticed is that a lot of remote viewers, when their kids start, you know, oh, and my kids you know, let's develop my kids abilities now also. And so there's a strong correlation there. 
Mm. And, and just people who in general who love this work and want their children to take advantage of these opportunities. Because I work with a lot of kids, Lisa, that are not quote unquote labeled psychic. These are just kids, just kids. And those are the kids that I work with. And um, we then start exploring what that looks like to develop these abilities. So that is where, that's where most of the kids are that I work with. Just to oh, right. every so cool. kid, not indigo child, not star seed, not labeled psychic, your average kid who just, whose parents are somewhat open to this, curious about the work and the kids, the kids are so great at being able to just have no veil, no filter, no fear, and can see and do amazing things. That's beautiful. And I always think of psychic as sort of like a muscle, you know, like we're, we're all born, we're like something like musical ability or athletic mm -hmm. ability. We're all born with some level of it. Mm -hmm. And if we get that fostering that you're talking about, like somebody's really fostering this, opening this, encouraging this, then it's going to develop to its potential. And if we don't get that, it stays kind of quiet. It stays sort of like a latent ability. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. It's just that's how that's exactly how I refer to it. Also, it's like these windows of opportunity. You know, we we know that there are windows of opportunity that are better for second language learning, third language learning, sports, music, everything. So um, we look at at this, and this goes for psychic ability as well. So, yeah, absolutely, and I I. I think you have a guide called children who know how to know. Is that, is that the right children who know how to know? Is that the right title for it? It is. That's the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the book. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about that book a little bit. Cause that's the, the book. That's the guide for educators and supporters that mm -hmm. um, can help, help children. Okay, thank you. So I wrote this book in 2017, but it was in the works for much longer. And science kept changing on me, but it was great because science would confirm what I intuitively knew. So it took a while to get the book out and done. And this is a book that is for parents, educators, anybody who wants to develop their own psychic ability, even the child within them, or to work with children. It is a seven, seven step guide. It goes, it starts with, you know, it has intuition, it has brain development, it's got techniques in there, activities, um, the connections between thought and language. I even have a chapter on mindfulness and intuitive heart, using our heart to connect oh. as a method. Yeah. And um, then there are activities in there. So it's a really easy, concise guide to help you yourself, not you, Lisa. I mean, people get themselves started. Are you kidding? I'm going to get this book. No, of course I am. <laughs> and, and then use it for their children also or anybody else that they want to teach. It's simple. It's easy. It's an easy read. That's beautiful. And and if people wanted to connect with you too, you have a website. And um, I know there's a lot of different ways that people, you have classes and coaching programs and things for people that want to work with you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I am running an online, I have an online um, psychic development course for children and their parents. And this is called the um, Make Magic Happen. And that you can find that on my website under the Psy Kids tab. And mm -hmm. this is self-paced. It works with the adult and the child. And then I also offer, <laughs> I also offer a free 16 page guide. So if you go to the Psy Kids tab and you click the what if, then you'll get a download. That's a 16 page guide, um, five ways to make magic with your child, really, you know, helping your child tap into their inner magic, great activities, fun things to do. You don't need to have a kid to do this. You can be the child in you also and explore. Right. I love that. So it sounds like, you know, like you also work with adults to people who are also, it's not just exclusively children, but all, you know, those people that have been um, wanting to open up their psychic abilities, you have lots of stuff for them as well. Yeah. And I work with, I do work. Yeah, I do. And I also work with people who are looking to just, um, manifest what is quote unquote the impossible. And that's in my, my other programs. Cause one of the things that I really believe is that we have this incredible power within us. And when we know how to harness that power, it's psychotronic power, when we can take that psychotronic power and use it, we can move mountains, part the seas, 
quantum leap and achieve miraculous results. And I do, I use that in my quantum leaping program with entrepreneurs, professionals, people who are pretty clear about where they want to go, but they got trapped in the third dimensionality. And so we move mountains. I teach them how to move the mountains. Right. It seems like that's kind of like the, um, the newest upgrade, like the hottest new technology. Like when we had the secret so many years ago and what the bleep so many years ago that this is like the, the next evolution of that same, you know, idea that what we create our reality with how we think and feel, and we can actually learn how to control how we think and feel and aim the bar higher than just choosing out of our, out of our darker places that mm. are unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this power has always been within us. I mean, this is just, it's always been there. So it's learning how to harness that power with, you know, so that's where the bulk of my work is with adults also, just creating that. Beautiful. Well, Ali, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for all the work that you're bringing into the world. And I, w I wish that you had had this program when we were both kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? When we were when we were sort of struggling on our own way in the way back in the way back in the eighties, you know, um, that in the sixties and seventies, like that was some dark times for me too. So, thank you so much for um, for the work that you do, and and that it's so beautiful that there are people who can find this material and don't have to struggle like that. Yeah. And thank you for having me here today, Lisa. I really appreciate it. So it's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. If you, if you guys, uh, thank you all for listening so much or for watching us today. If you want to um, come visit me, come visit me um, at lisacampion.com. I'd love to, um, to hear from you. You can check out some of my resources for psychic healers and empaths that I have on my website. And I just want to, um, Thank you for sharing this journey with us today where we are healing the planet one person at a time right here on Empower Radio.